What's going on guys? Big welcome to you all to our channel. We are Team Crushing the Meta, you are here with D-Boy. And today we will talk about the premium deck when it comes to Spike Brother Turbo. So before the Zazan engine was um, let's say banned or limited or restricted, we had multiple decks that we could build when it comes to the Spike Brother deck. The, the decks that I have built myself for the Turbo deck, we're talking Turbo Premium of course, Turbo GB8. The decks that I did build myself were basically the first one you have the pure turbo, which we will kind of go back into in this video. The second build that you could build was the hybrid turbo, which was the one that I played the most, which played half a vanilla engine and other cards as well. And then you had the pure um, vanilla, let's say, where you also play the, uh, the right line of the vanillas. And then you also had other builds that you could make, like the, uh, the the vanilla that you played lots of vanillas, but that you didn't play the right line, but you could also play it right. So four decks basically that you could have built. Now with the vanilla engine being removed uh, because we could not play it anymore, we go back and we actually have two base builds that we could make. And the third one is also the Barrow Magnus build that you could also play because you have that engine that you could do with the new grade two from the new set. And of course, having the fact that you could still play cards like Detonate Barrel to make the combo working. And because you could keep putting those Detonate Barrels back to your deck, um, you could keep on going, which is also a pretty nice combo. But the problem with that deck is, is that sometimes you have to ride into the Baron Magnus and you don't really create that much markers. So three decks, Baron Magnus deck and two different builds when it comes to the base. Which builds are there and how could I show you those builds? Well, we will build the deck together. We will go through the grade twos, grade ones, grade threes, everything. And I will show you how the deck would actually look like from the cards that we have to put into the deck to the cards that we could put into the deck to make the deck strong. So the great three lineup. The first card that we have to, or we really need to put in the deck is of course the Rising Nova himself. This card is crazy good just because of the fact that it gives you those double markers. And by having the double markers, you create the force one and force two. And with that, you could pretty much punish your opponent because every attack will hit for two damage. Riding into this boy twice or riding into other grade three that gives marker and then back to this boy or the other way around, you have that 20k um, circle with the crit two and then with every attack that you make, the GB8 will of course also give you the extra 10k and with that you have a 30k basically attacking whatever plus because everything that will attack, even a trigger, will be a 35k, which is huge. And also hits for two damage. So Rising Nova is basically the most important grade three that you have to put into your deck. So we will put him right here. The other card that you could add to the deck is of course Jelly Beans. Because Jelly Beans could search your heals, Jelly Beans could also search some of your grade twos, even grade ones, if you want to play grade one Dudleys. Jelly Beans is just the card that makes the turbo with the starter because with him you could search out the reels and with your heals you could GB8. Next, we will not add other grade threes yet because these basically are the most important one and we will come back and talk about what are the options that you could add when it comes to grade threes. When it comes to grade twos, you have actually different grade twos that you really need to put into the deck. Uh, the first one is, of course, the Spike Bouncer. Uh, some people are a big fans, some are not. For me, Spike Bouncer is one of the cards that makes the, the, yeah, the combo actually this good because you could keep on going. Next card that we have is Breach Sprout. Another card that actually came in and it was just support for the GB8 right away. And last but not least is, of course, the Detonate Barrel. All of these are cards that you kind of need to play in your GB8 build. And because we played the vanilla engine, we took cards like that Barrel out and kept Sprout in. You have to choose which route you want to go. So I will keep all of them in here and we will talk later about 
how we could build the deck and what are the other great tools that you could also add to the deck. So rising, we don't really see the face anymore. For the great ones, the only great one that I find necessary to add into the deck is actually tier. Tier is just an important card because you focus on spike bombs and you need your counter masses. Another thing is, is of course, if people play only, if people play the rabbit, then tier is just important for you to get those counter charges back. There are another cards that you could add to the deck. Cards like Wonder Boy are also important. At least play like two copies of him. He's just too good. Also, Wonder Boy helps you in the early game to put those heals back to your deck, especially if you have half two of them in the early game, like one in the damage and one went to the drop zone because you healed it, then you could not search them anymore. You could not go into those three heals in the hand to get the GB8. So that's why you play them on. So this is basically the, the, the base of the deck. These are the cards that you need to have in the deck. Detonate Barrel and Wonder Boy are extras. You don't have to have them in the deck. And if you take out the, uh, spi the uh, Spike Bouncer, then you could also just take out the tier if you want to. But I like tier also be him being a 6k. It's just really good because you could undercut your opponents. Okay. The triggers, let's also talk about that because then we could take them out because the triggers will not really change. So first of all, we have draw triggers. So we run the PG draw triggers, of course, and then we run also vanilla draws. Um, you could play three or you could play four. It pretty much depends on how many um, of the crits you wanna play. Because I, myself, I like to play the uh, only three crits and that would mean that I add any extra drop but again it's up to you to, to choose what do you want to do when it comes to the draw triggers you don't really have other draw triggers that you want to run with let's say skills so you actually just run the vanilla draw but you also have the option to run different vanilla draws but some people would say yo d-boy why don't you play some foil ones uh, you could do that as well. I like this one because it is a cheerleader lineup. Every trigger except the the over trigger is uh, is a cheerleader, and that's why I don't play these. But I could understand people saying, "Yo, hey, play some foil draws, boy." Then we play, of course, the uh, the heal triggers, being the deadly heals. Uh, these are the heals that you could search with your jelly beans. They also give you the counter charge, soul charge if needed. Basically, the counter charge in this deck, and it's just a very, very, very important card to have in the deck. Um, this with jelly beans is just crazy that you could add it to your hand. Last but not least, we play one of the over triggers, and in my opinion, there is no reason to play the dark state over trigger in this deck. So you basically play the crayon mental one. Uh, there are different arts of this that you could play. I didn't really find another art that I like with this lineup being all cheerleaders. Even the, the two promos didn't really fit. So I'm actually just going with this one. All right, so the triggers will stay um, the same. We will not change that. So I will be taking them out. Again, the thing that you could change, you could take out one of the draws to play an extra crit because we don't need that much vanillas anymore. And also because you could use the crits to stride with. It depends on how many great threes you will play and or do you play stride holders or not. So that's it for the triggers. Okay, so what are the cards that you could put in the deck to make the deck uh, stronger? And also we just have more space, right? We have a bunch of cards that we could add to the deck. So First, when it comes to the grade three, what are the options that you could play? Let's put them right here. The first option that we have is, of course, the Ban and Drag. Second option that we have is, of course, the Juggernaut Maximum. And then we also have the Gunwolf, we have the Lucifer, and yeah, there are a bunch of others that you could play as well, but these are basically the cards that you want to play in this deck so what grade three will we add to this lineup because having only the three risings as right targets that's just too little you need to add two or three other grade threes uh, you need them to stride and some of them have good skills 
First, let's talk about the Gun Wolf. Gun Wolf have, of course, the ability that you could Soul Blast the, the, the Great Threes out of your soul. You need three Soul Blast, three Great Threes out of your soul. And then your opponent would have to guard with those amount of cards. But the thing is, in premium, they could still G-guard because the skill only works from hand. But the good thing about Gun Wolf is that he could recycle your field back to your deck. But again, I don't think that Gun Wolf is necessary. Also, he's just useless as a right target. He doesn't do much. So basically, we'll not play Gun Wolf. Although he's a beautiful SP. Juggernaut is very good because he gained that extra 10k power, which makes him a good beater and could hit up off higher numbers when your opponent gets triggers. So Juggernaut is a good uh, card to add to the deck if you want. Lucifer is good because you could target him when you're rising if you want to do something on that first right turn. But basically he's in here because of his, or he could be in here because of his first ability, which is just by a soul blast of one, he counter charges. And that ability is actually very effective because you don't have to use and, and keep using tier. He also gives you that counter charge back that you paid for your spike, uh, spike bouncer. So Lucifer is definitely a very good card to add to the deck. And then we come to my personal favorite still on this deck, which is the Bad and Dragger. Bad and Dragger give you access to good and Dragger if you want to use him, which could give you more markers. But, especially in this slow format. But, Bad and Dragger also comes out of your soul when you ride on the top of it, which he could get rid of cards like Honolly. Bad and Dragger is also a good rare guard because he still gained that crit. But also, put one of your rare guards back to your deck, which means cards like Tear and Wonder Boy you could also put back to your deck. So, in my opinion, Bad and Dragger is still the best card to add in this deck because he's a good rare guard, he's a good fan guard, and he gives you the option to get rid of problematic cards if needed. He gets the crits if needed. So that makes him, in my opinion, the, the best option. But again, it's pretty much up to you to play whatever you like. Some people like, they just want to play the Juggernaut because of the art, because of the unit itself. I could understand that. Some people say, yo, I want to play this affair because he gave me the counter chart. Understand that as well. So you need to play at least two bad and draggers. You could play three if you want to, but let's say for now we play two. So we have six right targets and that's okay. For the grade two lineup, we actually have all the lots of cards that we could play in this deck. Two cards that make the deck more consistent are of course the Dudley Mason and we also have the Dudley Mountain. There is another card that we could also play is Axe Diver because Axe Diver still works because mostly you'll have Rising as your finger and Axe Diver could give you an extra attack as well by Soul Blasting and Counter Blasting. But if you want to Counter Blast, you would rather use the skill of Spike Monster. So Dudley Mason, Dudley Mountie, you could search them out with your Jelly Beans. I would only play these two cards if you don't play that much great twos. But if you play lots of great twos, then I don't think that there will be an issue. So I will not say to play these two cards, except again, if you have a problem with writing. Another card that you could play is of course Bobo. Bobo is still good in this deck because he could give you the, the kind of a counter charge and an extra damage, which kind of look like a counter charge too, which is good. Also, it would be harder for your opponent to guard. I would only play him as a one-off, there is no reason to play more, but again, it's just a very nice card if you want to add him to the deck. Double Summoner is a good card. He's a seven base, which is important because you could undercut your opponent's vanguard, even attacking sometimes with your trade one, which is very, very good. Also, his skill is basically free. If you get something out of him, that's nice. If not, that's okay. And you could also call him during your GB8 turn and he could sometimes still hit again if you have enough markers. Mayhem Tiger, a card that I have played a lot and Mayhem Tiger is just insanely good. Playing one or two is sometimes more than enough because you keep recycling him and it's just one of my personal favorite cards from the whole clan. And of course, last but not least for the options that we will do in this video, we also have the Devil Dome. Devil Dome is very good because of the skill that he has, which doubles his power. So the power doubles after boosting and 
adding extra powers as well. So basically when he attacks, you soul bless one and then this boy doubles his power. So that he's only 6k. So let's say that he's sitting on two markers and you have the skill to GB8, you give it to him as well. So that's when he gained 30k. So that's 36. 36 and then you use the skill to double that power. That would mean the six divided uh, or multiplied by two, that's 12. So you have 12 instead of six and then the 30k becomes 60k, which makes it this 72k. That's insane. Hitting for that much power is just crazy. And because of his skill that he could go back to the bottom of the deck, the same as Char, that's just insanely good. So these, these two cards are basically the cards that you want to add into your deck. Also, the Veldome is only a 6k, which is good sometimes to undercut the opponent if you really want to. If you play against a rush deck, you don't want to write this card because it's only a 6k. So you don't need to play these two. Bubble is just a nice extra, but I don't think it's necessary. Devil, uh, Devil Summoner in this format is not needed. So you have to choose between playing the Mayan Tiger and the Devil Dome or going back and playing the Detonate Burl. This choice I would leave up to you. If you play the Detonate Burl, then you have three cards you could add. I mean four cards, which means that you could not play an extra grade three. If you play the Mayhem Tiger and the Devil Dome, then you just need to add one more copy. So let's say you add one more Mayhem Tiger and that will give you the option to play another Bad and Dragger. And that's the route I'm going with. And those are the two decks. Basically, you could choose to add the Detonate Barrel or not. If you add the Detonate Barrel, then you take two Mayhem Tigers, Devil Dome and the Bad and Dragger out. If you don't want to play the Detonate Barrel, then you will play these. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't need to make this that much attacks. So I'm making less attacks, but I'm making stronger attacks or attacks that are very irritating for your opponent to guard. If you don't know what Mayhem Tiger does, Mayhem Tiger has the ability charge. Charge means that you, he needs to be called by a skill. He needs to be superior called. When he's superior called, you could say charge, then he will be charged. And charge will mean at the end of the battle that this unit attacked or boost goes to the bottom of the deck, which is good because you want your Mayhem Tigers to go back to the deck so you could keep recalling them with the skills of the GB8 or your other strides. The second ability is when he becomes charged, if you have GB1, whenever your opponent plays the Guardian on the Guardian Circle from hand, from whatever, if that Guardian is a grade 2 or less, so he could not get rid of grade 3s and G Guardian. If that card is a grade 2 or less, you could activate his ability to Soul Blast 1 and retire the Guardian. And that skill is not once per turn, is not once per battle, is not once per everything. So if they keep guarding from their hand with grade 0s and grade 1s and grade 2s, you could keep Soul Blasting to get rid of those cards. If your opponent uses a perfect guard, he will not get rid of the Nullify effect but you could still Soul Blast 1 to get rid of the perfect guard and sometimes your opponent would not be smart enough to stop guarding, they will keep on guarding but the attack will never hit because the attack is still nullified. So there are a lot of crazy interactions that you will do with your Mayhem Tiger and that's also the reason why I will also do a combo video on this deck to show you guys what the deck is actually capable of. And we will also talk at the end of this video about what happened right now that the Zazan engine is gone. All right, so that's it for the grade twos. So we play four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 11 is my, fine, uh, my favorite lineup, which is 11, 11, 11. So we also have four, eight, and three, which is also 11. When we look at the grade ones, we have five. So we have six grade ones that we could add to the deck. Which are the right great ones to add to the deck? Well, first of all, we have the Acrobat Birdie. Actually, both of them. The one from the G era and the one from the V era. Both of them are very good. Why? The Acrobat Birdie from the G era actually help you to stride, but also when you place it from hand, you could activate the ability to search out, show a grade three, search out your rising and add it to your hand. Which means sometimes when you only have jelly beans in the hand, 
you really don't want to ride that jelly beans and the acrobat verdi becomes a very important card to get that rising and to get those markers although we play more gray threes i still like the acrobat verdi in the deck the v acrobat verdi is on the other hand very good as a right target but also to call it as a regard First of all, he gained the 5k, so he becomes a 13k Peter, which is good even during a GBA turn, but mostly because of his second ability. When he's placed on hand, you could look at the 5 cards and you could search a great rate to the hand. If you could find the jelly beans, that's basically searching a heal. If you could find another great rate, that's also good because for some reason, for me at least, I don't have the right great rate to my hand to, to ride. So playing these cards will make the deck more consistent, and that's what we didn't have when you play the vanilla engine. Another card that I'm also a big fan of is actually Pinter, Offensive Pinter. Offensive Pinter is a very interesting card to add to the deck because it has a very nice synergy, especially with cards like Devil Dome and with cards like Mayhem Tiger, cards and also the Spike Bouncer because all of these cards will go out of the field because of their own ability so having cards like this that has a nice synergy with the gb8 is very interesting which i will explain later on when uh, i will do the combos how good this card actually is because it's just like that nate barrel is a nice plus one just out of nothing other great ones that you, you could add to the deck you could add cards like only of course that's good you could add cards like more copies of wonder boy or big low ted that's good as well you could add more tier that's also good but in my opinion these are the cards that you want to add and i will just keep it at this now i'm playing two of everything so i'm going acrobat verdi two on two because i just like searching the uh, rising to my hand and I'm also playing the two copies of Pinter. So we'll go three, two, 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 two. I just like it the way it looks right. So again, pretty much up to you to change it up. I don't think that it's necessary to play Pinter, but it's a very good card. Is it necessary to play this much Verdi's? Again, up to you. Otherwise you could just add more Wonder Boys to the deck. At least you could just play one extra copy. So this is basically how the deck would look like. Of course, for the starter, you will play the, uh, the Mega Trainer. Um, and we will just put the triggers again right here for you guys to see it, which is the complete lineup. I hope that you can still see this on the camera. I think you could. Uh, we have the heals. We have only the three crits. Uh, we have a bunch of draws, of course. When it comes to the stride deck, so we talked about the main deck. What happens now to the stride deck with the cyclone being gone, this beautiful card being gone? Uh, what happens right now? Well. Again, you have more space to add other cards. You have way more space to add cards. And that's good because now you could also build the deck differently. So keep the deck uh, like the way that the deck looks, which is important for you to make your stride deck. So we'll start at the basic cards again, building the stride deck. The first card that we will play in the deck is of course the GB8 himself. Why do we need two copies? Because of the over trigger. Because your opponent could always damage check and over trigger, there is a next turn for you to finish it off. Sometimes you still go on and on and on to make more pluses and to get the right cards to your hand, which like G Guardians or heal triggers, I mean, uh, or purple guards, or just to draw more out of cards like Spike Bouncer and stuff. But basically, sometimes you have to give up that turn to go to the next turn to finish your opponent off if you could. There is another route that you could go to is Vermeos, but we will talk about that later. Next important card that you want to add to the deck is of course Violence Ace. Violence Ace is basically your draw power. You need to have Violence Ace in the deck. Next, we also play the two copies of Merendol. Because we took out the Cyclone, you now need more Cray Elementals in your G-Zone to flip. But also when your opponent doesn't give you the damage for you to use Violence Ace because Violence Ace draws you card but it's also about that flip. You want the flip in your G-Zone and that's why Merendol also helps because Merendol has the ability to flip without you paying anything. And although his skill is not that effective, it's still very good because you just need to flip and sometimes you don't even attack, you just want to flip and then end turn. 
Next, we have other options that we could add to the deck. So these are your strides, because when it comes to the G Guardians, you will of course play the four copy, the three copies, I mean, of Lioness. I still don't have my SPs there in the mail. You have your two copies of Gus and you have your Prey Mentals. So these are the G Guardians. The G Guardians, important. Three, six, seven. Seven G Guardians to give you the GB8 when you want to go into him as a first stride. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we have three cards that we could add to the deck. What are the options? First of all, two copies of Agrius, still good. Second, Chromius. Third, we have the good end dragger. And last but not least, we will have the Formido. Those other cards, uh, Picaro, you could also play those but I don't think that those are necessary. First, let's talk about Formido. So what's the strength of Formido? First of all, he gives you Soul, which is good if you play Formios, but you, you don't really play this in this card. It's just an extra. You don't play, play it in this deck. Second is he gives you Field Control to retire from your opponent if needed. Third, he gives you the free stride that you want to use against Nobutama Megacomb. Nobutama has been taken out I'm not sure about if we will see Meikoni or not, but it is a good card. You could definitely play him if you want to. Next card that we'll talk about is Good End Dragger. Good End Dragger is, in my opinion, also a very good card because it does give you the markers. Of course, you have the ruling that you could uh, play to ride even more and get even more markers, but you have to commit to the field. But you could just use the first, just, just his ability, attack, counter plus one, put a card from your hand to the soul, and then ride a card from your deck and call a card. So you get an extra attack as you have put a card from your hand to the soul, but you also ride a card, which means that you actually gain more markers. And if you ride a, a, a rising, which you go from the bad and dragger, because you need to go from bad and dragger to rising, the Bad and Dragger from your soul will come out because you ride on top of it and with that you still retire a column so you plus as well. So Good End is just a very 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 good card especially in a slow format. Formios doesn't really work in this deck because you don't have a way to fill out the soul. The only reason why you would play him is if your GB8 turns backfires and you don't have enough cards in your deck to, I mean, the right cards in your deck to go another turn into the GB8 and that's when you could go for me as your opponent would be at like four or five damage and you could focus on that circle and keep attacking from that circle and for me as would work but again if you want to play this card take out one copy of the GB8 so play one GB8 and one for me or play two GB8 for me I actually like Agrius I'm a big fan of Agrius because Agrius still draw you a card Agrius could attack into a Ragard. Agrius is your aggro round if you feel like I could pretty much destroy my opponent on this turn, then Agrius is just the right card. Agrius, but uh, good end dragger are the right cards. I don't feel like this is necessary in this format because Nobutama is out, and I just don't want to play this card because, again, I would like to have the two GB8s in the deck. It, I, I love this card, but it's not made for this deck. There is another deck that it's basically made for him but so these are the two cards that i like to add uh, to the deck and with that you have the complete 16 cards for your chisel all right so we have talked about deck we have talked about all the options that you could put to the deck to make the deck stronger make a difference and we talked about stride we talked about triggers we talked about everything this is where the video will end there are two more things that i want to talk about when it comes to the spike deck right now what did the Zazan engine do when we took it out that's one and the second thing is the combos I also want to explain the combos we will not go into that in this video there will be two other videos that will follow this video that I will explain it for you guys all right thank you guys for watching thank you for zooming for for tuning in our channel thank you for the support you give to our channel and then my last question for you if you have stayed this long watching this video which draw trigger do you want me to play? Do you want me to keep playing the cheerleader draw trigger because she, Pauline, fits, of course, well with the other ladies in the deck? Or would you say, yo, D-boy, 
why don't you play other draw triggers? I'm a big fan of this art, so this could be the one that I want to replace Pauline with. But actually, on the other hand, I also like them being all out cheerleaders. Um, I'm not a big fan of his art, although I will put him, shaky boy, I will put him in my Bruce deck whenever I will change it to set 3 uh, and take this one out and maybe put this in premium. What do you think? Do you want me to play one of these? Or would you say, yo, keep this beautiful lineup the way it is? And the second question is, of course, do you like other arts from the Credimental Over Trigger that I could add to the deck? I, I thought there was an SP of him, but I couldn't find him. I thought it's, maybe it's another promo. But uh, again, uh, this is not an SP, this is not an SP, this is not an SP, this is, is an SP. So that's the only SP in here, so it doesn't really matter in being an SP or not. All right, guys, again, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in our channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comments because again two questions and also comments on how would you build your deck if you're building the gb8 deck thank you until next time